Hey guys, Liz one here, I'm back in another video. Just want to update you guys on a few things before we get started here. I re -up I re updated the channel again, so the podcast, I've seen the buzzer, uh, different categories to make it a little more organizable for people to navigate. We also have 441 subscribers, and here's our watch time for subscribers. Not really all that bad, that's your highest it's ever been. But uh, I want to hide with Discord server here. Go join it, it's in the description, the invite link. And but aside from that, yeah, just make sure to read the rules before doing anything. Aside from that, I'll see you guys later. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm David Ross. I'm John. And I'm Crystal. And welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Warrior Podcast. Today, we are doing Sasuke 38. The Sasuke tournament that aired not even a week ago at the time of recording this, but meant for 2020. And man, was I impressed with this tournament. Even though 2020 has been a horrible year uh, with, COVID and all that, with COVID and all that, they were still able to do an actual, actual tournament. It wasn't any different, unlike, some, unlike something that happened this year. It was just a normal Sasuke tournament with that with just no foreigners. So I'm going to be covering it, but I'll take it over because it'll look different. We just going to be covering our basic highlights. It's basically people that we recognize while watching it, or people that cleared. But um, otherwise, that's about it. I'm not we're not covering everyone. It just because in addition to um, most of them being cut, we don't know everyone. <laughs> well, because most of them are Japanese, so then I have much to say. It won't be worth. And yeah, you get my point. Yep. So, unlike usual, we're not covering everything, but we're gonna cover a grave amount of it. So we have to start off with stage one, which had a pretty cool obstacle lineup in my opinion. It's all with the quad steps and rolling hill, which were pretty fine. The combo's been there since Sasuke 34, so people have gotten used to it at this point. But then we have probably my favorite obstacle here, the silk slider. An obstacle I certainly wasn't expecting to show up. Yeah, I think it was like very unique, very interesting to have it just have the silk slider there. And then we had the fish bone, which is basically just a whole bunch of balls swinging back and forth. Yeah, the time, the time you're walking and you're balancing. A um, few people failed this. Uh, and with this, we had a one notable disqualification on it. But aside from that, not too bad. We had the dragon glider, which is basically just a double dip off from A and W. So. That one had, was the big ninja killer here. Then we have the tackle, which is more of a time waster, but it's meant to tie you out for the warp wall, which is the final obstacle. Let's go, and the buzzer is just right on top. So, what do you guys think of the stage one? Well, it's no way I like it. It was nice and fast, it kept you on your toes. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good way of describing it. But anyway, hey, we're gonna go on to the actual ones in about a second. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is Toshawa Kashihide. And also, I forgot to mention, we are definitely going to even, um, mispronounce some of these names, so please let us know if we do. And we won't care. <laughs> we won't collect it because we're too lazy. But anyway, um, Toshawa is a one of the oldest competitors. I think the oldest actually competing here this year, but he's a weightlifter. And he failed Rolling Hill. <laughs> yeah, no one actually failed the quad steps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unless they were cut. I don't think anyone actually failed the quad steps. But Kachihide was only notable because is um he's been competing for over um I believe twenty tournaments maybe. I I think more like fifteen. But still, no, he's one of the most well known. He's part of a um four part of four drug competitors who compete on the show. From like Sasuke 10 and onwards, whereas people like Mr. Octopus and Hang Quiet Man, man, people you probably don't recognize, but just watch the, this video and you'll probably know all about them. So, yeah. Next up was Saikawa Koji, who was the first uh, competitor to quit the course. Well, he's doing it with 8 seconds left on the clock. Well, nothing really too notable happened to his one. And I, and I was expecting him to time out considering how, knowing when he ended up showing up. Yeah, we already saw like a couple of competitors before him. So it was kind of like, he'll probably just time out at the wall. But now he actually made it up and moved on to stage two. 
uh, which means we get to move on to the next guy, Kaji Hawa Hayachi, who was the net, who was the second finisher, and went in the course in 10.22. And I'm just gonna be honest here, the ending here at the beginning part wasn't really all that good. <laughs> yeah, it was like, like so many people were deceased and timed out, and uh, you told me. When we were just doing a private talk on this, you told me that you fast forwarded through most ones. I spent through like halfway through just so, cause like, I couldn't seem to say obstacles over and over again. And yes, I'm glad they cut many people, but um, still, the amount of people were well, that way it was still too much, so I just fast forwarded through all of them to like the dragon glider, you know, unless they, you know, failed there or failed out, you know. The next people to quit were the Black Tigers, Yamamoto, Ado Yoshiyuki, and Aisa Yoshinoi. Wait, these are both, they're named the Black Tigers, just due to them being apprentices of Mr. Saki, Mr. Sasuke, and Kasumi Yamada, who is one of the All-Stars. Next up was Ho Hoki Masashi. He yeah, ended up calling with 6.27 seconds left on the clock. By the way, so yeah, that, that guy cleared and we're gonna move on. Then there was Shinsuke Nagasaki. He was one of the most well known competitors in Sasuke, due to him uh, making stage 3 plenty of times and even making the final stage in Sasuke 17 along with Makoto Nagano. Now, Nagasaki unfortunately went out on the Dragon Glider item, but the next number after him was Ryo Matachi. Yup. Ryo Matachi is one of the most well-known competitors and one of the most skilled, making the final stage twice in his career. And he completed the course here, getting revenge on the fishbowl, which took him out in Sasuke 37. And this was good. A lot of people had high hopes for him, due to the fact that he was one of the top competitors in Sasuke 36 next in 2018. Yeah, which that also meant we can move on to another competitor, the Sugata Winnie. He who isn't really all that notable, well, aside from having a really close one, barely even making it to the buzzer, with only one second left on the clock, uh, which was the slowest coil in the tournament. Then we had Oshi, Oshima, uh, eh. then we had Oshima Ayano, uh, who was probably the top woman, aside from Jesse Graff, in Sasuke. She won the Dragon Glider. I was really sad. I was a little mad. But that also gave the way for Awaki Naoyuki to get through with the course with five seconds left on the clock. <laughs> yeah. I like how, like, there are so many competitors. We have, like, no idea who they are. Nope. No idea. That's why I said, and if we were going to do Sasuke 38, we'll structure it like this the high rise of the people we know. Not anyone else. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good call. Cause I, I don't think we can come up with uh, with new things to say uh, for the 80th guy who got cut. <laughs> yeah, cause like even um, even at, like 81, when places really high, they still get cut. So, really, I guess it just comes down to what they fail on. Mostly it comes down to if they're well known and what the way they fail. I think that's what those are two contributing things to determine if they end up getting cut or not. Then we start getting into the All Stars, starting with Shingo Yamamoto, who was knocked out by the Dragon Rider. Shingo Yamamoto is known for being the only person to compete in every single Sasuke tournament, but ever since Sasuke won in 1997. Definitely an impressive feat, but that doesn't mean he's had impressive results. Oh, it's not so that often, all that much either, as to here. Yeah, well, even now, it's not that, but the Dragon Glider for the second straight year. Then was Toshihiro Takeda, who is another all-star, and is known for getting stage 3 13 times, 7 consecutively, more than any other competitor in Sasuke. And he was disqualified on the fishbone, as for skipping the last pedestal. And I was, this was a big shocker, because I didn't know that, that was disqualification. <laughs> you know, many people go for it, but I guess he didn't know that. <laughs> no more explaining here. Then we have, have Iwanamo Otto Haikawu, who finished the course with, an eight, with eight seconds left on the clock. Then we move on to Yamato Kaitaro, who 
Oh, it's a boy. Oh, that's too not a boy. Except he completed the course, obviously, with 15 seconds. It was a laugh. Uh, final couple ones here, we have Sano June, who is one of the top stars of the new generation of Sasuke. Sasuke, who quit with 30 seconds on the clock, fastest quail of the day. Then we have Tata Sasuyoya, probably not how you say it, but he also quit with 5 seconds left on the clock. And then we have the two all-stars, or is it Makoto Nagano and... And Kasumi Yamada, who both went out on the Dragon Line. But then we had probably the most shocking fail here on stage one, on which which was Kaz, which is which was was Tomohiro Kawaguchi, who was one of the most well-known stars. It was in Sasuke 30 when he made stage four. He's been blazing through the competition, getting at least to stage three. But the last two tournaments, he's tied now with the wall. The wall. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it seems like they mentioned him training for the warp wall, but when he got there, he just timed out. And that was kind of sad, because he was one of the top commanders. And of course, the final two numbers, which were Yuji Uchihara and Musuke Morimoto. Although both cleared as well, both being really well known. Yes, um, Yuji being before this tournament, the only person to achieve double total victory twice, whereas Imoimoto being the only person to get the stage 4 during this current era of Sasuke. Now we can move on to stage 2, which was definitely an interesting course, where it started off with the rolling log. <laughs> I mean, last year it started off with this tail, but the weather affected, so we couldn't get to see it. But here... We did end up seeing the wall in the log, and it was really cool to see. It was, it was such a change of pace. So then we had the um, um, down up salmon ladder. Then we had spider walk, which is kind of cool, I guess. But really, this should have been removed. <laughs> Sorry, spider walk. Then we have the back screen, which is basically just a giant current of water you have to swim through, swim through which is usually just a big time waster. Then you have the reverse creep there, which is already difficult because of the back screen. And once again, it is another time waster. And then we have the wall flip, which is once again, wall lift, which is again another time waster. So this is why I don't really like stage two. It's basically just based off time wasters. It says we could only time out in those areas and no one else. But it, it, it's fine, it's fine. The stage 2 course was actually quite interesting. Taking that, icky now, most of the field and many of them being pretty shocking. Shocking. Okay. Okay, first, us quills, as we want to mention here, are the Black Tigers. Because both quilling with Isa Yoshi, Mo, Noah could put in the course with the quote. Is completing the course with only 0.44 seconds left. Course is clear of the night. But there were a lot of competitors on that. Well, for course is clear. Because we had Yuji Wushihawa just barely missing on stage 3 with a timeout. And we also had. And Hayoka Himashoshi, who's another known stage 3 zip. No, but no one person who get the state who got the stage three often, who also tied out with the wall flip for the first time in his career. Well, yeah. but of course he got some success once again from Sano June, who cleared with three seconds left on the clock. Tata Tatsuya cleared with five seconds, and Yusuke Morimoto, who had the second fastest time here, cleared with eleven seconds left on the clock. The final thing I want to mention here is Ryo Matachi, who shockingly failed on the salmon ladder. We would just seem like he failed. Seemed like he just gassed out. Boy, he hung in there for over 10 seconds before he just dropped. Yeah, it was kind of weirded out by that. I was like, huh, what? <laughs> Why? I, and also, the rolling log, almost no one got knocked out by it. Yeah, and unfortunately, I feel like it's going to be taken out. And not because only one person got taken out by it. <laughs> yeah. And with that, we got to move on to stage three, which was once again pretty interesting. Sasuke usually has pretty good stage three. It starts out with the flying ball, which is probably my least favorite obstacle here. Yeah, it's very technical. Again, I like it at the end more at the beginning of the course, because it usually just take out the big names right off the bat. But um, then we have the sidewinder. 
you know, which is basically just a whole bunch of soldiers jump in between that have drops. I've always liked this obstacle, personally. But then we have Planet Bridge, which is so, it's just basically a version of the body prop. But we just have to navigate using one of the walls instead of the other side of the wall. And then we have the Cliffhanger Dimension. And the Cliffhanger Dimension is actually a really cool obstacle. It's basically just a crazy cliffhanger. And you can reach at the swing from back and forth the cliffhangers. But each cliffhanger light just happened the first one are on motors that move up and down and or back and forth in the case of the final jump. Um, and this makes the cliffhanger dimension the hardest version of the obstacle, taking out a big coin in chunk of competitors, including the black including one of the black tigers, Yoshiyuki, Oki, Sato June, and Tada Tushiawa. Uh, and with the other black tiger being knocked out of the flying bar, that was the only person to clear this obstacle was Yusuke Morimoto, who, after crushing the vertical limit, also destroyed the pipe slider, which was the final obstacle here. So here, yeah, which meant he got to move on to stage 4 for the fourth time. Where, now here on stage 4, this looks a lot different than the instead of an A&W, well instead of it just being a simple rope climb, it is a spider climb, then a salmon ladder, and then a rope climb. And you can use a lot of time and by um, missing ledges on the salmon ladder, something up on the spider climb, which by the way, the walls do contract, do, do contract as you move up it, so you gotta, gotta move up there as fast as possible, but that's why I kinda like the stage, it is a very interesting but Yusuke ends up getting a double total victory. Wait, wait, that's why I said before the time I was mentioning Yuji, because Yusuke tied him in terms of total victories. He's one of only two competitors now to so have ever done that. And that's the time it ended. And then with Yusuke only both of those finish. And so what was you guys' reaction to this? I was like, oh my god, yes, we had some light in this year. Like, oh my god, I was so happy to see Yusuke at the top of stage 4. I mean, it was so cool. Yeah, just the fact that we got to see Yusuke Morimoto defeat all odds and get revenge on the, the stage that has taken him out, out twice. And he's in Sasuke 35 and 36. And 36 is really, really, really heartbreaking because it was really close. But anyway, that was Sasuke 38 in episode 9 of the Ninja Warrior podcast. In the next episode, we're going to be covering AW12, hopefully. We're going to record others here and there. But we're AW12 is what we're going to focus on. And then after AW12, we'll, we'll wrap up AW Junior and the other Ninja Predators. And we'll do AW13, obviously, but we'll get there when we get there. So, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.